Welcome back. So on the 20th of December, Dublin will play Cork in the All Ireland final. Cork beat Galway yesterday, 217 to 13 points. But as I'm sure you're well aware of at this stage, that has not been the main focus of the story today. There has been consternation right across various sporting bodies about what happened at Crow Park. To discuss, we're joined by Evie Fitzgerald, Cork manager and Galway player Mairead Shoige. If you, I think people are, are largely aware of uh, the circumstances yesterday. When did you get word that Parnell Park wasn't playable and that Crow Park was going to happen? Uh, I received a phone call at half past eleven to say that um, from Helen O'Rourke to say that the Crow Park wasn't. Oh, sorry, that Parnell Park wasn't available, and would we play in Crow Park? So you know, obviously, it was a bit of a shock. So um, we stayed up overnight and. Uh, in, in the hotel and we decided we'd we would play because if we didn't we'd have had to go home and play again the following week so you know I suppose we didn't have much of a choice to be honest so yeah we said we would I asked for the game be put back a bit um, and I was told no because um, if it, was put, it couldn't be put back because of the the 330 uh, throw in for the uh, main semi-final and and so on and so forth so we just rounded up the girls and we were staying in the Clayton up at the airport, so they provided us with two buses, and we got into the buses and headed for Crow Park as quickly as we could. Mm. Um, obviously, the girls thought I was... <laughs> I wasn't serious first when I told them, but um, once we got in together, I think we got on, we got on the buses as quickly as we could, and we got there for about quarter past 20, past 12, I think. Okay. Went from there. Did that give you enough time to prep as you'd like? <laughs> Mm, well, no, it's a straight answer to that, no, but um, we were told that the game was starting at one o'clock, so girls went to the to the dressing room and did what they didn't need to do in terms of getting ready, and we got them onto the pitch as quickly as we could, and I think that was about, I suppose, what I mean, been quarter to ten to one, I'm not sure, so we, anyway, we proceeded with the warm-up, and, um, and then we were told a few minutes later that the game was on at ten past, mm. um, and... Um, God, at that stage hadn't hadn't been on the pitch, so um, so um, anyway, look, it, it went on, and you know the, the rest is history, as they say. But you know, the total total unsatisfactory, the whole thing. But um, I just think, from my point of view, I suppose I've, I've been speaking about this for a long time in terms of the the. I think the professionalism of what we do now is kind of outgrown the administrative side of of the LGFA in the sense that. You know, they don't have any pitches of their own. Um, we wouldn't have the financial support in terms of crowds at games and, and stuff. Um, so, like, I think the natural progression for me uh, would be an amalgamation between ourselves and the GA. Mm. Um, no, I know that's just maybe looking at a simplistic view, but I think it has to happen if we're going to if we're going to get equality is what we're looking for. I mean, we have equality in so many areas of our life now in terms of racism and, and LGBT and everything else. You know, we need to be start looking at it from a sporting point of view and not just from the point of view of yesterday's game. That, that's Hopefully it'll be a bit of a watershed, but in terms of trying to attract young people into into football, you know, we're, we're hearing about obesity and, you know, I'm a teacher myself and I teach disadvantaged kids, so I'm acutely aware of the, the importance of sport. You know, but if you're if you're... You know, a young girl, and I'm not talking about very young now, but if you're a teenager looking at that chest, you're saying to yourself, what's the point? You know, if you lead that, you get treated like that. Where, where are we going? So I do think it's... Um, and it's not having a cut-off the LGFA. I mean, there are circumstances. I, I, I can understand all of that. But I do think that, you know, if we're to progress this thing, we need to we need to move on in terms of amalgamation. Yeah. So you found it around half 11... Marage, the, it seems the Galway team found it a little bit before that, maybe just before 11, sometime around Kinnegad. Yeah, we were in Kinnegad um, when we found, or well, when the management um, found out, but we were actually back on the bus, um, having left Kinnegad, taken off for Parnell, and Tim came down to tell us that there was going to be a switch change of venue and also a change of um, throw-in time that they were trying to push for one one o'clock, but um, all straight away, all of us started checking the Google Maps on the phones and whatnot to see how far out we were from Crow Park. And at that stage, it, it was saying that we weren't going to hit Crow Park until near one o'clock. And the whole way in, then, sure, we must have hit every red light that was um, on the whole way in. And I think it was at twelve forty-two. I was definitely still on the bus because I got a message, and we hadn't even turned down the road to Crow Park at that point. 
So by the time we got off the bus, we had to get off out in the car park and then walk in um, down in through the gates and down into the tunnel and um, into the dress room from there. So that as well, you know, ate up a small bit more time. Um, I'm not sure if it would have saved any time going in on the bus, but um, yeah. So when we got into the dress room, we just got ready. Like Ify said there with their gang, we just got ready as quick as we could. Um, didn't have really any time for activation indoors or anything. It was just a matter of bathrooms, change, jersey, and out we went. And we were going out onto the pitch and they were screaming the ball's been thrown in in six minutes or eight minutes. And then we weren't even over at our um, warm-up area. And then out through the microphones, they started saying, can all the subs and backroom team please make their way to the stand? And we were all kind of just in disbelief at the whole thing. I guess it was all so, it's like nearly an outer body experience. And mm. Um, yeah, so then we obviously tried to proceed with the warm up, but we kept getting, you know, shouted at saying, come on, come on, the match has been thrown up, the match has been thrown up. And, you know, we just, um, yeah, we just didn't get anywhere near adequate time for preparation. And even from, you know, I suppose player welfare is what they're kind of trying to look at there. And there was definitely no player welfare in terms of um, allowing us to prep our bodies to play in such conditions, you know, given the time of year and everything is definitely above any time um mm. the warm up was definitely a vital part of it not taken away from um the result and the great job that cork did yesterday obviously this has now been overshadowed as because of all this commotion which is an awful pity because they're getting to play now in the biggest game of the year and i'm sure that's what they'd rather be focusing on than all of this but i suppose something has to be done about it um so that it doesn't happen to girls in the future no, it's unacceptable. And to be fair, everybody from Galway has uh, strongly made the point that there's no sour grapes in their part and that Cork were deserving winners and we absolutely accept that. So um, Marie Hickey on Morning Ireland talked about all the time you guys spent in the dressing room. That was part of your problem, that you spent too much time in the dressing room getting ready. Well, all that we've been allocated has been 14 minutes this year with um, COVID restrictions pre and post game. You only get 14 minutes in the dressing room. So there's no way we could have spent any more than that time and we came straight off the bus on into the changing rooms got ready as fast as we could and we were out um when they knocked on the door we were out onto the pitch so i don't know where that argument is coming from but it's certainly not true that we spent um too much time in the dressing room because we didn't have enough time in the dressing room don't mind too much <laughs> yeah i mean when the lgfa president is saying that on national radio this morning about you what's the reaction yeah um, to be honest, it was like <laughs> hitting people when they're already down. Um, you know, we were already in such kind of, I suppose it was upset really, um, the way everything was handled and the way the treatment and reception that we got. Um, you know, yesterday was supposed to have been one of the biggest um, matches of the year for us on the biggest stage, which turned out in the country, you know, um, and it was supposed to be a day where our family and friends were all sitting at home getting ready to watch us perform. No matter what the result, you'd still have a nice memory of that day and getting to that stage and whatnot. But um, I just felt that everything, all the goodness was kind of taken out of it when all of this came to the fore. And then this morning to wake up and see things rolling out and uh, the president of the LGFA coming out and saying statements like that. Um, yeah, it was very, it was very upsetting is all I can really say. And I know um, on behalf of the players, everyone feels the exact same way. Yeah, I would imagine so, especially if you spend about 14 minutes in that dressing room, as you're saying. Uh, a key point here, uh, Ify, you said you asked uh, the person you're on the phone to, you know, is there any way throw-in time can be maintained, you know, which would have made all the difference. And the answer was no, because of the men's game. So Marie yeah. Hickey was asked, was asked if she had asked anyone was it possible to push back the men's game, which was thrown in at half past three? She said, well, no, I didn't. To be honest, uh, we didn't because we were just so delighted to be getting in there in the first place. We just went with it. And, you know, we thought it was brilliant to be getting to play the game in Crow Park. Like, I mean, you know, they're supposed to, like, the LGFA is to, supposed to look after all the players here. And it, what, the question wasn't even asked. You know what I mean? Like, it, uh, afraid well, to upset anyone is the attitude. We, because the well, men's game wasn't thrown, it, thrown in. Yeah, I just finished. The, ga the game wasn't thrown in until half past three, the men's game. RTE had loads of space after the match. Pat Spillane had hypothermia if you were watching afterwards. I mean, they had acres of time post match. And the question wasn't even asked. So, I mean, that doesn't make sense to me. I mean, are, are, like, are those in authority fighting for more? Or are they just meekly saying, well, look, thanks a million. Sorry to bother you. Really sorry that we exist. 
I don't have a clue, to be honest. My attitude to this competition all year, and I've been consistent with this, is that I didn't think it should have taken place in the, because of the COVID situation. Now, when the game was fixed for Limerick, when, no, we had a vote, actually, the girls voted that they wanted to play, and that was grand, and we, you know, we prepared accordingly. But when... When the game was fixed for Limerick, it was happy enough. I think all games under the current situation should have been played under, you know, where you could go and come home in the one day. Um, when it didn't happen, I advised my opinion last week strongly that, you know, it was ridiculous that we'd have to go up overnight. And, I mean, it's a bit ironic that we can spend 14 minutes in the dressing room and we had to spend 14 hours in the hotel um, trying to isolate from one another with 50-odd rooms um, where girls had to go and have a bit of grub and go to their rooms Um and more or less they're separate till to, to, to the following morning. So there's a whole lot of, I suppose, contradictions in, in all of this. You know, player welfare, is, it gets thrown out fairly, fairly regularly. But, you know, the, when you look at the logistics of what happened yesterday, and because Galway lost the match, it's probably, it is, it's harder on them, obviously, because, you know, we're in the fight. But for me, the result didn't matter. And I've been, as I say, I've been consistent about this. The results... For me, last night, I sat up here at home last night until half to 11, until I was sure that Anya Terry O'Sullivan, who lives in, in, in Irie's is west of Dara, was home. Um, now, that's 500 kilometres for her from Dublin, and like, and she had clear she isn't far away from her, travelling separate cars, and, you know, we're a huge county, mm. um, et cetera, et cetera. So, for me, the most important thing was that everybody got up there and everybody got home. So now we hope, thankfully, we, we took all the precautions we could that everybody got home safe. But it, it, for me, this whole thing, the risk involved is far more. Um, no, I, 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 I accept that. I accept that. I accept that. But I, also, maybe you could argue, look, that applies to the men as well. And we're talking here about the difference between men and women. I mean, Mairead, when you hear but, that the, the president of the LGFA I didn't even ask, didn't even try and get in touch with Declan McBennett or anybody at Crow Park and say, can we push back the men's game 15 minutes, 18 minutes, 20 minutes? Like, the question was not even asked on your behalf. I, like, I just, I mean, it, it's, it, what kind of leadership is that? I mean, what, they're, like, they're supposed to be looking out but for the Joe, players. But I did ask, sorry, I don't know, but I did ask. No, you, asked. you asked, sorry, but the president of the LGFA didn't ask. The LGFA asked nobody. They just took, took, took it and said, okay, that's fine. But the reasoning I got for that was that if we had extra time um, or, and these penalty kicks or whatever you call them, shoot, yeah. shoot out at the finish bit, yeah. that would have impa impacted on the, on the senior football game. And, 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 the, and the, the, an the, answer, the answer to that, Efi, is surely, well, what of it? Like, would, well, any, would any, any of the men been too worried about a 10 or 15 minute delay? I don't think the J. Personally, I don't think the J. would have gone for that. But I, I mean, I can't answer for them. I, I, I do think though the solution would have been that if the match ended in a draw, that we'd replay next week. Something like that, been potentially. Yes, yeah, something that like for that. Me would have been yeah. would have been far more reasonable. And I'm sorry that I didn't suggest that. But I like I was taken more than anybody else. I was taken with a little bit of shock when mm. when this happened. So, but. I, I don't think we'd have got the men's match put back again. You might have, though. Honestly, with... honestly, honestly, you might Maybe. have. Or Orte had Maybe. loads of time afterwards. Yeah, loads I, I of time afterwards. That. And I, that. I, don't, I don't think either of the two managers uh, would have had an issue, May or Tipperary, both very reasonable people. They would have got word, at, you know, mm. they would have got word before midday. There's going to be a 10, yeah. 10 15 minute delay. Yeah, e that, everything allowed I... for it. And, and the point is, and I'll, Mairead, I'll bring you in, like, your leader, like nobody in the LGFA, uh, LGFA asked, is the point. Like, what, mm -hmm. like, what, there's a meekness about that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. we, we can have lots of conferences and we can talk about, you know, how much we value women's sport, but like, the, the people at the forefront of it have to fight a little bit on your behalf as well here. And just none of that happened yesterday. Yeah, and it's just, it's the irony of it being the 2020 campaign year and all of the hashtags that have been trending over the last couple of years building and building and building um you know for younger players to aspire to you know have access and um to better facilities and just better planes um conditions and then for this to all turn around and happen you know um i'm a primary school teacher myself and i'm all the time preaching to the children that you know there are no limits to what they can achieve and if they want something bad enough just to go for it and work for it and it'll pay off for them and you know then they all sit in front of their telly yesterday to come and watch you know um the girls playing on telly and next thing is this all happens and 
you know, you turn around and how do you explain to them why they couldn't watch it or why it couldn't have been played at the right time or why we weren't given the right... I, I don't even have an answer yeah. to it, you and, know. And so. are, you, are you generally satisfied with the LGFA and the job they're doing? Because, look, I, I accept as well, weather is weather, it was unfortunate. I mean, you could argue the frost was potentially foreseeable, that, you know, check the pitch earlier, or maybe just have a double header at Crow Park. You know, all of these things mm -hmm. were there. But look, it's unfortunate when weather like that strikes. So away from yesterday and the failings of yesterday, Mairead, what job are the LGFA doing, in your opinion, generally? Well, I think as a whole, you know, definitely the game has, you know, it's the fastest growing um, sport in Ireland at the minute. And that is as a result, obviously, of what's gone in in the back in the background and, you know, how it's been pushed and promoted and in such a short space of time from, you know, it's still a very, very, um, it's in its infancy, really, you know, when you look at it in terms of how long it's been around, um, you know, there has been a great, great amount of um, progress made. But at the same time, when it boils down to these kind of decisions or these kind of days, I just think that time and time again, these type of um, predicaments, you know, come to the fore. And I just don't think maybe they've always been spoken about or highlighted because maybe it's been at earlier stages or different things like that. Um, nice. So, yeah, I guess that's... But uh, that being said, you know, I, no more than, you know, Sinead Burke was speaking earlier and how we've had some amazing days um, and days out with the LGFA and the Ladies Gaelic as a whole. But at the same time, you know, these are the days that you, you work for your whole life or you dream about and then for you to be treated like this, I don't know, it's just kind of contradictory of what is being promoted. Okay. Listen, we're just out of time. Um, Ray Shoga of Galway and Evie Fitzgerald, Cork Manager. Good luck in the final, Evie. Thanks so many for joining us. Okay. You're welcome. Take Best a short Evie. break. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. Off the ball on News Talk. Look for local this Christmas. It's up to us. To feature your business on the Pat Kenny Show, email us at patkenny at newstalk.com. With thanks to the local enterprise offices. Make this Christmas sparkle with Pandora's Bracelet Promotion. Still looking for the perfect gift or a festive treat for yourself? Spend €109 Euros to receive your free silver bracelet. But hurry, this offer won't be around for long. Ends Thursday, 17th of December, Wastocks last. Terms and exclusions apply. Remember the Christmas when you said, he definitely wear this. And he said, yeah, you saw me wearing it last week. Well, to you I say, Maldron Hotels gift card. Or when you said, now here's something she'll keep forever. And she said, thanks. Do you have the receipt? I say, gift card. Because rest assured, gift giver, that when you give a Maldron Hotels gift card, they'll be simply speechless. <sighs> Finally. Oh, you got one right. Oh, 